Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Shinrin Yuko, and Magnetic Reversal News. Bringing you a grand solar minimum update, Monday, September 21st, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. Holy macaroni! Over a meter of snow predicted in the Alps, but the big story, Bobcat Fire grows to 103,000 acres making it one of LA County's largest ever wildfires. As 1,700 firefighters battle the blaze, which is estimated to burn through October. Keep calm. It is boom time, kids. Welcome to the show. Let's talk about Tropical Storm Beta making landfall on Texas and Louisiana right now, saturating the ground, which is already saturated. The expected slow motion of beta will produce a long duration rainfall event from the mid Texas coast to the southeast Louisiana. Flash, urban, and minor river flooding is likely. Rainfall will also spread northward into the Arc Latex region and east into the lower Mississippi Valley and portions of the southeast through the end of the week. Flash, urban, and isolated river flooding is possible. Let's come quick, take a look at the live stream, which is barely playing here. This is Tropical Storm Beta nearing the Texas coast. Give them a thumbs up over there and go watch if you're so inclined. Here we're looking at the rainfall totals for the event in question. We have some regions here with 6 to 10 inches expected in small pockets. Most of the area looking at 2 to 4, up to 6 inches on the coast. And this is already saturated region, so there will be flash flooding. The greatest flash flood risks over the next three days, areas in red. So heads up to those regions. Proper prior planning would prevent piss poor performance in this case. Now the Bobcat fire grows to 103,000 acres. It has burned 15% currently contained as of Monday afternoon. Fire broke out on September 6th and is now one of the largest ever in LA County. The cause is under investigation, but we know what the governors think, climate change. They're gonna take them to court. More than 1,700 firefighters are currently battling a blaze that has a containment date of October 30th. That's when the wind and the rain and the snow start falling. Authorities said nearly 19,000 firefighters in California are fighting 24 wildfires. Well, that's job security. Good job, California. Improper forest management for decades have resulted in these blazes, as well as drunk idiots lighting fires on the side of the highway. Now, future tracks showing the dust and smoke literally saturating Canada in the look at this this is all up in Canada all this smoke they must hate us coming straight up and we're talking areas in Wisconsin as well as Chi-town also hazy and smoky hazy milky white sky reddish sunrises sunsets possible smoke smell <laughs> welcome to 2020 elevated fire weather thunderstorms and snow forecast for Wyoming this week hello September a September to remember. And we're going to be talking about early snows and continuous snow. Remember where it was never going to snow? Here's that snow coming in to Wyoming right there. And that will be Friday into Saturday, this weekend. And then the snows are moving into Canada already before October even sets in. So it is going to be a bumper crop of the global warming goodness. Frosty start allows Maine ski area to fire up its snow guns in September. Again, September to remember. Beta nears the Texas coast. Teddy brings swells and rip currents to the east coast. Now, Teddy just basically scraped by the Bahamas and is now moving up and towards England, but that does not prevent the perfect storm from happening. So if you're a lobsterman, please stay out of the way. Beta will bring the risk of flooding from the mid-Texas panhandle. Here's flood, flood warnings and flash flood warnings and watches with wind advisories. Now take a look at this up in the northeast, all the way down. Look at that into West Virginia and Virginia. Governor, say it ain't so. It is. Frost warnings and freeze warnings and advisories from Connecticut through Massachusetts, New York. Huge swaths, dozens of counties in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, Hello, it's getting chilly early. Where's the global warming? Hello? Bueller? Bueller? Life-threatening storm surge may occur along portions of the Texas and Louisiana coast through Tuesday. Rainfall will also gradually spread across the southeast U.S. through the week. Flash flood warnings and watches we just showed you. Hurricane Teddy will remain 
active in the Atlantic, bringing swells and dangerous surf all the way up to Maine. It's insane. Rip currents, too, so keep an eye out. Don't let the kids swim in the rip currents, kids. Now, the snowfall totals and what's happening to Finland might be scaring some people, but we predicted this four years ago, so there's that. Now let's just run it through. Boom, Greenland is getting buried. I mean, we could just see it here. Meters of snow falling in this particular region. Finland looking for a half a meter. A meter or more across all of the Alps from east to west. There's gonna be a huge pocket of heavy snow up in the high elevations here on the border of Spain and France. So wait for it. It's coming this week. And let's just give you a, a time frame on that. It's all happening Friday, Saturday, Sunday which will be your fun day if you're in the Alps. Seismic update, no quakes of note, but we have interesting intracraton quakes here in Russia, as well as a cacophony of quakes. You can't see them all in the mid-ocean ridges over the last two days. So there's that. And then we also have some space weather to report on. As the sun awakens into solar cycle 25, we have a sol sunspot turning around the, the limb here, and it's creating quite a flurry of activity in the B range. No flares but just increase activity. And you can see here the glorious region we're talking about if it would parse up. Probably won't parse up, but that doesn't matter. We don't care. I'm not going to share you the link anyway. That's secret information. So here's a current snapshot of the sun, and we can see that region turning over the limb. Should be Earth-facing in a day or two. Should turn over the limb in 24 hours, and then within seven days it will be facing directly toward us. Now, based on telemetry, and some of the modeling. Uh, this has already produced a major flare that shot off the back of the sun to the left here. And so there's that. So we're gonna be watching it closely for you and others. Now, many people on the video I put out yesterday on Sangay eruption to 40,000 feet, probably VEI 23, the largest eruption since 1934. People that live in Ecuador are saying, this is fake news. It wasn't on the news, it's fake, you're lying. Well, there is, I can show you the Himawari satellite, the pictures now coming of the explosion punching through the atmosphere here into the stratosphere. Hello. So even if you didn't see it on the mainstream, there's a reason for that because these volcanoes are going to be ever increasing and they're going to go silent, which is why we started the channel. We knew this would happen. Here's an excellent picture of the Sangay volcano, spectacular eruption to 40,000 feet. And go check out the video, which has over 40,000 views, I think, from yesterday. Now, university appeal was upheld in the federal courts. Peter Ridd loses after he won. This is bad news for you and I. This means censorship is now legal. And they can kick you out, take all your money, and ruin your entire career because your research does not fit their paradigm. It's disgusting. We're going to try to get our friend Jennifer Mauro Hassi back on the show, who has been documenting the lie. Now, Peter Ridd has claimed that the coral reefs are not dead, for goodness sakes. Just go snorkel out there, especially certain corals they're claiming are dead. And this is being corroborated by Jennifer Mauro Hassi, also a scuba enthusiast who goes out and looks at these corals. And why would you deny the beautiful coral reefs fringing Stone Island? Well, you would do it for propaganda purposes. And that's to push the climate agenda, the green agenda. For policy, it has nothing to do with you or me. It has everything to do with making the common human feel like a piece of shite because it's all your fault, which it's not. It's the fault of major industry. If there's any problems with pollution, uh, or the environment, it's because major industry continues to be allowed to pollute. It has nothing to do with the tiny man. The amount of toxic chemicals and pollutants, 90% of them are caused by industry, not by you. So get over it, please. Start meditating. Take a class in Shinrin Yoku. And what I mean by that is go walk in the forest. Little Ice Age triggered by Arctic sea ice. Awesome paper. Right here is the paper evidence for extreme export of Arctic sea ice leading to abrupt onset of the LIA. Now, this may have come from Greenland, as the paper suggests, but it's not the only source of these outflows of cold, disruptive waters or ice. We're waiting for one to come from the Arctic. The Beaufort Gyre has been sitting and spinning in there for years, and very little is known about this. But what we now know from this study is that 
A period of global cooling that lasted from the early 14th century to the mid-19th century was triggered by an exceptionally large outflow of sea ice from the Arctic Ocean into the North Atlantic in the 1300s. Now, we're waiting for a huge burst of cold, cold fresh water to be released from the Arctic gyre, the Beaufort gyre. And when it does this, it will literally potentially shut down the Gulf Stream. And that would lead to literally the Arctic in all of England and Scandinavia. Literally overnight. Just like that. Can you hear that? So there's that. Any questions, leave them below. I'll leave you links to all the papers. Do your own homework. The tipping point at the heart of the climate crisis. Now, this is coming from Fearmonger's site, The Guardian, that all they want to do is, all they want you to do is donate money to them. Every article you read, there's a, donate money, we're going to be shut down, the world is ending. Well, many parts of the Earth's climate system have been destabilized. It's true, but it's not by warming. The warming has been gradual for, since the last cooling. Barely a 20th of a degree every year for 150 years. Now, from ice sheets and ocean currents to the Amazon rainforest, climate anomalies are being blamed on you, which is the embarrassment to everyone. This, I mean, these 10, 20 years on earth if they were actually looked at retrospectively in the future are going to be some of the most disinformation filled filled times ever i mean it's disgusting science is dead propaganda is king and misinformation well that's a skill that the six multinational corporations that control the mainstream media have been utilizing to the nth degree now tipping points i just talked about when the beaufort jar gets released boom the Gulf Stream is going to stop providing that warm water to the north. And guess what happens to the north? It's over, Johnny. So there are certain tipping points, none of which the mainstream is actually telling you about the true ones. Now, Arctic sea ice melts to the second place finish ever. That's the headline here. The only problem is they base on all their data from 1979. Now, why would that be? Because this is the starting point, 1979 where the anomaly gets warm. Well, take a look what happened back here in the 1930s and 40s. There was almost no Arctic sea ice, zero, much less than today. But they won't tell you about that because global warming, it's your fault. It wasn't your fault back here in 1973 when the lowest sea ice extent was ever recorded. Almost no ice in the summer. Has any mainstream outlet reported that to you? I didn't think so. Those are the facts. And then if you come over to the actual National Snow and Ice Data Center and read this chart, it, it doesn't even make any sense. If you click on this link to the adulterated data, take a look at where it goes to nowhere. Click on this link, just push on it. It's gonna go to some defunct page with weird pictures and other stuff overlying things. Not, that's where the link goes to, very telling. And this is the fraudulent data where you click on it and it takes you to that page of nothingness. It's showing that in the 1950s, ice was much higher than today. Much higher. Now, here is the 1973 low based on observations. Now, let's come over to see the 1970. There it is. This was less ice than today, and yet they're showing it as much more ice because this is the Arctic standardized anomalies. That means we lied and we shifted the data based on new information because we're lying. The old information was bad because it was based on observation. And, and we don't use any of this data anymore because it does not provide us our messaging. <laughs> so we'll lie. Scientists find secret molecule that allows bacteria to exhale electricity. Well, you live in an electric universe. Space is not a vacuum and everything is electric or there would be no magnetism. New solar cycle to potentially cause technological vulnerability. 
techno to cause technology vulnerability? Is this new news? It's breaking news. Solar flares could take down the grid. Oh my God. Important to understand the solar cycle because space weather caused by the sun can These really pricks. impact the power grid here. Well, scientists predict the sun's activity will increase over the months and years to come as we get closer to July of 2025. That's when the next solar maximum is expected to occur. Over the course of the cycle, the sun will transition from a calm period to one that's really intense and active. During the peak of this activity, the sun's magnetic poles flip and it's possible for solar flares. Why are they showing the sun on a diagonal axis here spinning? This is the dumbest I've ever seen. Or other eruptions to disrupt communications here on Earth, making it a potentially vulnerable time for us when it comes to using technology. Vulnerable means that it can be, you know, your power grid can actually go out completely like it happened in 1989. Um Amen, sister. So that's all I'm going to show you there so we don't. We're one strike away from this channel being erased. So I'm trying to keep it simple. Now, have you subscribed to our new channel, Shinrin Yoku? This will also be erased, as well as Magnetic Reversal News, if we get one more copyright strike in the next 30 days. So please don't be an idiot. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Shinrin Yoku is up and running. In just two days, we have 350 subs in the first two videos. In just a moment, I'm going to put up the third video on the science behind Shinrin Yoku. It's going to be the first in a series of 10 videos on scientific papers that have come out. Why simply walking through the woods alone can heal dozens of ailments in your body. It has to do with some secrets. Phytoncides. And these phytoncides are what the trees send out like a pheromone to fight bacteria and fungi. But when you breathe in these phytoncides and they hit your skin, they have miraculous healing properties. So come check out the new channel, subscribe, and stay tuned for that video. I want to thank all of our one-time donors, most especially the almost 100 people that stood up in the last month and a half during our demonetization to become Patreons. If you're proud to watch this channel and share our videos, you can donate as little as $1 a month to help our cause. And our cause is to give you unadulterated, factual scientific information that was researched independently with very little spin. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom.